Well, hello everyone. Um, my name is Clay Whitehead, and I'm going to just bring a little word uh, today that the Lord showed me. I was I was reading the other day, and I don't know if God does this to you, but like rabbit trails always lead to something in my life. Like He's always speaking, and He's always saying something obscure. And uh, so I'm, I was doing my daily devotional, which I was nowhere near the Book of Judges but that's where he ended up leading me. So what happened was I was just, uh, I was looking up the word rock and like how many times it used rock in the Bible and where it used it at, whatever. Sorry, the wind's blowing. And I came across this scripture in Judges and it was talking about um, a place where the Benjamites fled to this rock. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go check this out. So I studied, started like looking at the names of things and what, what they meant and all this stuff in, in, in Judges chapter 20. And so I just wanted to, to read a little bit out of Judges chapter 20. And I just, want to, I just want to show you something that the Lord showed me. And it may not be a revelation to some of you. It may be a revelation. I don't know. I just, I just want to get on. I feel like the Lord said to get on and just share it. And so I just want to be obedient to my, my Father, my King, my Lord. And, uh, yeah, so there you go. So, in Judges, chapter 20, um, first of all, I'll say in chapter 19, if you go and you want to read the whole story. So, in chapter 19, there's a Levite, and he's traveling, and he happens to go through the, uh, the uh, area of Benjamin. So, they have, like, their own area right in Israel. And so, he goes through this area with his concubine. And he stops in this town, and the town is Gibeah. And in Gibeah, this old man invites him in to stay in his house for the night. Says, no, you can't sleep on the street, you know, whatever. And ends up, the, the men of the city want to come and do wicked things to him. And he ends up, his concubine gets sent out. And I'm not going to go into the graphic detail of it, but... You guys might know the story. So some bad things happen. She ends up dying. The <clears throat> Levite then cuts her into 12 pieces and send her, sends a piece of her to each of the 12 tribes, the heads. And everybody's in an uproar and like, what in the world is this? This has never been done before. What's going on? So they all meet together and have like a, a council meeting, right? Like a Israel council meeting. And so... In that meeting, they determine, the, of course, the guy comes, gives his testimony. And so they're like, well, we got to punish the, uh, this town, Gibeah. And Benjamin, their tribe says, no, we ain't going to have nothing, no, nothing to do with your punishment. We'll, we'll protect them. And so Israel's like, okay, so be it. And in verse, in chapter 20, so that happens like in 19, in chapter 20, um, it says, I want I just want to kind of hit on this one point here. Let me look at where, where it's at. Sorry for the break. Well, heck, let me just read. It says, I'm going to start in verse 18. It says, and the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Now, Israel gathered together, and it says earlier in the, in the chapter, 400,000 guys that were going to, men of war, 400,000. That's quite a bit of people. Benjamin only gathered like 26,700 or something like that. It's, you know, the odds are like 15 to 1. And so you think that Israel would just dominate this, this place. Um, it is interesting to note that the name Gibeah, it means hill. So you just keep that in mind. So it's kind of a, it's on a hill. It's a town on a hill, a city on a hill. And it's, so it's well, well defended, right? So you can't just go marching right up to it. You kind of have to draw them out and then draw them into battle. So anyway, verse 19, and the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out 
to battle against Benjamin, and the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. Twenty-two thousand guys fall that day. That's almost the same amount of guys that Benjamin has fighting. Um, and the and verse twenty-two and the people. Sorry, and the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves. It's very interesting. And set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. Uh, verse 23, And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until evening, and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came near again to the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again 18,000 men, all these who drew the sword. So now the body counts up to 40,000 people. They, they've killed. Benjamin has slaughtered 40,000 people. That's like a tenth. I didn't even think about that, but... Interestingly, that's a tenth, that's a tithe of 400,000. Very interesting. That's even another layer that I won't go into. Um, let's see where we at. Then all, this is verse 26. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came into the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even, evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I yet again go out to, my, go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? Now it's very interesting to me that this time they asked, they, didn't ask, they, they kind of asked the right question this time. They said, Shall I go out or shall I cease? Should I, should I not do this? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into your hand. And Israel set liars in wait around about Gideon, set an ambush. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And they began to smite of the people and kill as the other times in the highways of which one goes up to the house of God and the other to Gibeah in the field, about 30 men of Israel. Now that's not quite the count that it has been. And the children of Benjamin said, oh, they got prideful. This is great. And the children of Benjamin said, they are smitten down before us as at the first. But the children of Israel said, let us flee and draw them from the city into the highways. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place and put themselves in array at Bel Tamar. And the liars in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah 10,000 chosen men out of all Israel. And the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And this, this is great. Verse 35, And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. And the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day 25,000 and 100 men. All these drew the sword. So of their, of their men of war, 25,100 men, Israel slaughters of Benjamin. That's almost everything they have. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten for the men of Israel gave place. Hang on, the wind's blowing. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten for the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites because they trusted unto the liars in wait, which they had set beside Gibeah. And the liars in wait hasted and rushed upon Gibeah and the liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait that they should make a great flame with smoke rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill of the men of Israel about 30 persons. Right? It's kind of just a little flashback, kind of skips around. For they said, surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But 
When the flame began to arise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them, and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness, but the battle overtook them. And them which came out of the cities they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about, chased them, trod them down with ease over against Gibeah towards the sun rising. And there fell of Benjamin 18,000 men. All these were men of valor. Uh, it just kind of goes on to say every, everybody that they slew. Verse 46, So that all which fell the day of Benjamin were 25,000 that drew the sword. All these were men of valor. Okay, so interesting things that I want to point out in this passage. Now, if you read it at face value, if you just read the words that are on the page and you don't dig into it, it's, it's a story, right? A story of battle, kind of confusing at points because you're like, God said to send Judah first, you know, and then they get their butts handed to him. And then they go up a second day. He tells them, they inquired, they asked, and he says, go up again. They get their butts handed to him. And then the third day they ask, in a different way. I'm going to kind of point out that the surface layer, what you just read, is just one dimension of God. So God, God is so multi-dimensional. Um, the Jews, so the, the Jews believe that heaven is literally a breath away. So if you can imagine that my hand is heaven, they believe that heaven is literally a breath away. So it's that far. It's as far as you can just blow on it. And, and, the, re, and the reason that makes sense is because heaven isn't a place like in the terms that we think of a place. Like you go to California. It's, California is a place. You go to heaven. Heaven is not like California, thank God. Heaven is not a place. It's like a dimension. It's another dimension. So, so we live in a three-dimensional world and heaven is in another dimension okay so there's so many dimensions and it's the same thing with god like when he speaks he hides things in riddles there's a there's a verse in proverbs 25 2 it says it's the glory of god to conceal a matter but it's the glory of kings kings to search out a matter and and if you read it in other translations it's even more impactful like you can read like depths of it but the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search it out, right? So there's this, there's, he loves to hide things in plain sight, like in riddles, in words, in just crazy, crazy things, circumstances, you know, whatever, whatever it is. It could be thousands of things that happen in your life every day that he's hiding something in. Um, so I just want to point that out. So. I got to studying this, so I'm like, okay, God, he, I just kind of read, skimmed over it, because, you know, like I said, I was just looking up the word rock. I was like, I was interested in the rock, and the Benjamites ended up fleeing to the rock, and that's, that's really the only part of the rock in that story, but God wasn't speaking to me about the rock. He was speaking to me about the rest of the story, so I started looking up the meaning of words and stuff. Okay, so you go back to the first part of it, and the first, uh, we'll say, the, the first part of the battle. So in ch uh, chapter 20, verse 1, it says, Then all the children of Israel went out. The congregation was gathered to, together as one man, from Dan even to Beersheba, with the land of Gilead, unto the Lord in Mizpah. And the chief of all the people, the top dude, even of all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, 400,000 footmen that drew sword. Um, let me get to the point where I'm trying to say it here. Behold. Oh, yeah, that's right. I started in 18. Verse 18. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God. Okay, so this is when they're first going. And said, which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Now, this is... 
fascinating because Judah, the name means praise. More specifically, it's like praise of the Lord or praise of the Father. So praise, Judah. Now, does this sound familiar? Because I think there's a, a scripture, where's it at? It's in Psalms 100. And it says, and it talks about enter the gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise, right? So this makes sense. We should enter in with praise, right? This We should go forth with praise. Now, where they went wrong, and this is just my opinion, and just from reading this and I, I believe it's a word from the Lord, so you can take it or leave it. But if you read back in the back in the story a little bit, and it's in chapter twenty, and let me just find it, just just so I can be clear on what I want to say here, just so you you know that I'm not jipping you. I have it written down. Hang on, let me look at my my verse here. So just 1920 there was a point where they said like their motive was to punish them Thank goodness can't even find it sorry there's a little lull in the moment here read your Bible while I'm while you're waiting <laughs> Go up a lot against it. Gosh, I should have wrote it down. But anyway, it says like they, they go up and their intent is to punish Gibeah for the wickedness that they've done. And I can't believe I did not write it down. But, oh wait, it's in verse 10. And we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred of a thousand, a thousand of ten thousand, to fetch victual, which means to punish for the people that they may do when they come to Benjamin, according to the folly that they have wrought in Israel. So they're, they're going to punish them. In verse 10 is where it talks about it. So they're going to punish them. That's their motive. And then they go and inquire of the Lord. The Lord says, send praise up first. So they send Judah up first, which means praise. But their motive is wrong, and their motive is out of punishment. We're going to punish them. We're out of vengeance, right? We're going to we're going to do some harm to these guys. But to be honest, that doesn't sound like Jesus at all. Like what did Jesus say in Matthew chapter five? You know, he goes in, he does the the beatitudes and all that, and then and then further in chapter five, he's talking about love your enemies, bless those who curse you, you know, do good to those who spikes you right so it doesn't sound like jesus this is like this like isn't the heart of the father the father can deal he can do punishment himself he, he doesn't need us to punish people right and so their motive was we're going to go and we're going to get back at these guys yeah we're this is this is you know some would say well this is a righteous anger you know we're going to go and just serve righteousness to these guys well, I don't think that's how God sees it. But, I mean, I could be wrong. So, so then they get their butts handed to them. They come back. And what, is it, what does it say? It says, uh, oh, the second day. Oh, so, so they come back and they weep, right? It says they weep, which is, which is good. You know, they they weep. They feel bad. They're like, we lost some guys. What the heck's wrong? Did we hear right? Did we hear God right? He said, send up Judah first. We sent Judah first. We got our butts handed to us. What, what, what did we do wrong? And so then they go, they weep. They get that out of their system. They go inquire again. And they're like, and see, this is, I think, <laughs> it's interesting because I don't think they're asking the right question. They say, should we go up again? And God's like, yeah, go up again. And so, again, their motive is we're going to go punish these guys. Now I bet that even more so, you know, because they lost 22,000 men the first day. So even more so, they're probably like, oh, yeah, we're really going to give them some, some vengeance today. We're righteous, righteous anger. Here we go. And uh, 
So they go up and they get their butts handed to them again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then they come back. Now, this is great because when they come back on the third day, or sorry, on the, on the end of the second time they get their butts handed to them. So the second day they come back, it says, um, all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came to the house of God. Oh, now they came to the house of God. They didn't just weep. They came to the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord. They humbled themselves. They humbled themselves and they fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Now, here's one of those things. You dig into it. What is a burnt offering and what is a peace offering? Well, a burnt offering is for consecration. They consecrated themselves to the Lord, right? They committed their lives fully to him. That's what a burnt offering is. So they took and they offered burnt offerings. But what else did they offer? They offered peace offerings. And what is a peace offering? A peace offering is voluntary worship. That's what it is. It's thanksgiving. Enter the gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. So here we have two, two keys from that Psalms 100, right? So they came with thanksgiving and like voluntary worship. God, we worship you. Yahweh, you are so wonderful. You, you are the Lord. You're the maker of heaven and earth, right? This, it's not us. It's not about us. It's about you. So they, so they worship. So, so they consecrate themselves and then they worship and they offer these peace offerings, right? And then it says, it goes on to say, um, this will be verse 27. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord. And then in verse 28, it says, saying, shall I yet go out to my battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? Now he's my brother, right? Or shall I cease? And the Lord said, go up for tomorrow. I will deliver them into your hand. So, so beautiful. So now they're asking the right question because it's not just a, a single question with the yes or no answer. It's what do you want, God? Shall I go up or shall I stop? What are your thoughts? Right? And so it comes to this point to where they have humbled themselves. They've consecrated themselves. They've hum humbled themselves. They wept before the Lord and they've said, God, what would you like? This is about you. What, what is your will here? Do we need to just go home? Or do you want us to go up against our brother? And God says, go, because I will do the fighting for you. Right? I'll take care of this. I'm the judge. I'm the guy that's going to make this right. You don't deal punishment. I'll be the judge. Right? So, God says he'll go do it. Um, so the next day comes and, and, and the story goes on and you can read it. I'm not going to read it all to you. But they, they go to battle like as before, but they set, two, they set a company of guys and guys all around. I don't know how many companies, but they set, you know, men of war in ambush against Gibeah. And it's interesting that it's Gibeah because Gibeah means hill, right? And so, do you remember the verse, uh, where's it at? It's in Psalms 121, and, it, and it's David speaking. And he's, I, I, believe, I believe it's David. He says, I lift my eyes until, into the, uh, sorry, I lift my eyes unto the hill, up to the hill, to where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. So I look to the hill where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Beautiful scripture. I mean, that's Psalms 121. It's beautiful. So they go. But this is what, this is where it all began for me. Studying this out was right here where they hid. Okay, these guys in ambush. This is where they hide. Let me get down to the spot here. They hide in Bel Tamar. 
which means Lord of Palm Trees. Very interesting. What do you think of when you think of palm trees? Probably one of two things. I'm, going to, I'm just going to guess. You either think of palm trees being at the beach. So you think of the beach and palm trees, which is a place of rest. Or maybe you live in the middle of the desert and you think of palm trees like you saw in cartoons as an oasis, right? There's an oasis in the desert and there's palm trees. But what is that? That's a place of refreshment and rest, right? You're, you're, yeah, you're lost in the desert. You come up on an oasis where there's palm trees and water. What do you do? You drink and you get refreshed and you rest. So rest. Isn't that beautiful? And then it says another phrase in there. It says, mar, ma, it's like M-A-A-R-E-H. I think it's ma-are giva, which means meadows of Gibeah. Meadows of the hill. Now, what do you think of when you think of a meadow? You think of this peaceful, serene place, probably with flowers, beautiful, a place of rest. Now, do you think it's a coincidence that God put this layer inside of there? Like, he could have said anything right there. They hid in the field, the field you know. They hid outside the gates. They, hid, they hid at the bottom of the hill. No, he specifically names where they were hiding, where they ambushed from. And it's, it's from a place of rest. And I think it's key that we grab a hold of this, this revelation, if you will, and, and stop trying to punish the enemy. You know, we all have this great idea of how we're going to punish the enemy and, and whatever, but the fact of the matter is, it's it's God's job. It's, he says, I will fight for you, right? You rest in me. You rest in that place where you look to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, right? And so, um, they go into battle. You know, I told you the story. I read the whole story. Whatever. They fight. They act like... They act like they're getting their butts handed to them. They run away. Uh, the Benjamites follow them. And then these guys go from the place of rest. But then it goes on to say in there that the Lord smote the Benjamites. It doesn't say that Israel smote them. It said that the Lord smote them. So I just wanted to, to point that out. Um, but yeah, I just want you guys to know that... Rest is not a bad thing. Rest is a wonderful, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And that, you know, I know as a Western culture, we think that, oh, you got to work, 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 work all the time, make money, make money, make money, make money, do, do this, work, 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 work. And we even, we're taught like, you have to fight, 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 fight. But I just want to shift your, maybe your mentality on what fighting should be. As opposed, as or sorry, as opposed to what maybe we've been taught what fighting is, like we've got to go out and battle, but God's like, no, 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 no. You've got to rest in me, and I will fight for you. I will do. I will do the fighting. I will do the judgment. I will do the punishment. That's not your job. Your job is to rest in me, and I think that's like a key moment at this point in history that we we don't understand rest because we've been so busy in our lives and kind of COVID has brought on, you know, rest. People can, you know, people can say what they want about COVID. I don't know. I don't know what everybody's opinion is, but what I know is that what the enemy means for harm, God uses for good. And what he's done with COVID was he's kind of rearranged people's thinking on what's important. Those who, those who grabbed it, because some people go back to the way they were. They don't even, they don't even grab a hold of what God's saying. But, but some people, they, they, they sat back and they got a, a clear picture of what God was trying to say. And he's saying, your priorities were jacked up. And I should be your priority. God, God himself, the Lord Most High, Yahweh, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Yeshua, Jesus, that he's the most important. That it's all about him. It's not about sports. It's not about, you know, whatever it is, going to the movies or what. 
entertainment, you know, whatever, whatever we made it about. It's not about any of that. It's not about money, cars, houses, dogs, cats, whatever. It's about the Lord Most High. It's all about Him. It's all about entering into that with Him. And when we enter in to His rest, wow, He does our the fighting for us. We don't even have to fight. Like the, the reality is we don't have to fight. That Jesus did it all. And He fights for us. But we've made it about us and our strong, our strong arm, but our arm's weak. It's not strong. So I just want to encourage you, rest right now. Rest in the Lord. If you feel like you're trapped and you don't know, things aren't moving and things aren't going the way you want them to go, you know, think back to, to Judges 20. Them guys got their butts handed to them two times and they lost a tenth of their people. A tenth, a tenth of their fighting army they lost until they rested in the Lord. And when they rested in the Lord, the Lord fought their battle and, and brought victory to them. So I just want to encourage you guys and uh, let me just pray for you. Uh, Father, I just love you and I just worship you. And I thank you for today and I thank you for this, this group that's lasted this long, these people that have watched for, for this long. And I just, I just bless their lives. And I just thank you that you that they are beautiful people that you find you find uh, such treasure in them that you're pursuing them and that you're you're chasing them down and that you want to give them rest for their weariness that you want them to trade in their weariness for your rest and i just i just pray lord that you just touch them holy spirit that you just reach through there and you just grab their hearts and you just grab their minds and you grab all that stress and turmoil that's going on in their life and you just you just make it peaceful and calm and you take away all that burden all their burden what is what did jesus say he says uh, cast your burden upon me for my my yoke is easy and my my burden is light so god i ask that they cast their yoke upon you that they open up their hearts just to to say yes lord we just give you our burdens and we just rest in you and that your rest is good. And God, you're so lovely. Yahweh, you're so lovely. You're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Jesus, we worship you. You're so awesome. And we're so grateful and thankful for what you've done. And, and we just bless your name. <clears throat> we just say, holy is your name. You're the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And so I just speak a blessing over all these people. And I just say, Lord, multiply them. God, as they, as they, put their, as they rest in you and they put their burdens upon you, God, I just, I just say... Light them up, Father. Light them up. Fight their battles. Step before them and just prove to them that you, you are the judge. That you're the good Father. And you take care of them. And you fight for them. In your precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. So I just bless you guys today. And I just thank you for watching. I'm sorry it went so long. I didn't really expect it to go this long. I kind of was shooting for 15 minutes. But I think I way overshot that. Um, I'm sorry for the pauses. I'm sorry for the flaws in it, but I'm not going to edit this because I just want you to know the realness of it and to see the realness of it because I'm not, I'm not here to look good and I'm not here to, to do anything. I'm just a normal person. I'm just trying to, to live life and just do what God wants me to do and just be what he wants me to be where I'm at. And I just encourage you to do the same. So yeah, be Christ where you're at. Remember, just Jesus, man. It's all about Jesus. And uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day, night, morning, whatever, whatever you're doing right now. I just bless you, and I call you blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you.